All right, this little guy is a NIA. It's a network interface adapter and it's brand new in the ARRI ECS portfolio. And it might just change how you configure the way you control cameras and lenses on set. Let's get into it. So this is the NIA. It's a small box that now allows ARRI LBUS devices to communicate over an ethernet network. And that's gonna open a Pandora's box of possibilities for ways that you can now control one camera or multiple cameras and organize all of your hand units in one network on set. It plays very well with radio communication as well, where you have a split control system. But before we get into the detail, here are the four key points. The first is that I can now use off the shelf IP infrastructure to send lens and camera control commands from Hi5 to a camera. In this case, it's an ARRI camera, and I basically have a NIA on camera, a NIA on the Hi5, and an ethernet cable in between. But of course, this ethernet cable could be replaced with a whole network switch and a managed set network environment. Now, if I'm already scaring you about having to be an IT professional, don't worry, it's really plug and play, and we've developed a very simple network channel ID system, which you can see here is A, because this would be my A camera, and all I have to do is set a letter on both NIAs that are basically enabling this communication and it's done. Of course, we also offer a full manual setup if you need it, but it's a really simple system that I'm quite excited to explain in more detail. The second key feature is that now we have a high five that's in a network environment with ethernet, we can also break out of the ARRI ecosystem and talk to other ethernet enabled devices. So when we launch the NIA, we're going to be launching a new license to control Blackmagic Ursa Cine cameras and a license for the Sony Burano, as both of those devices can accept camera control commands via Ethernet. And actually, the Burano is a good example because it doesn't have a camera control input like we would have had in the past with most cameras. Ethernet is the only option, so now with the NIA, we can control it. But the NIA is not only about letting ARRI devices control third party ones. Point number three is that we can now let third-party devices control ARRI lens motors. And there are a bunch of examples that we already have working that I'll get to in a second, but basically think about a motion control robot now being able to access camera lens data, camera metadata, lens metadata, and lens motor control within the ARRI ecosystem. Point number four is that now we have lots of devices that can all be kind of connected to one network, we can now also let one high five control multiple lenses at the same time. So there's obviously really useful implications for 3D, whether or not that's true 3D or when you're using a beam splitter and an infrared camera for say sky replacement, as we've seen a few times now in big budget films, but also think about plate units where you can have say, 15, 16 cameras and all of their irises are now perfectly linked from one high five so I can ride the iris as we're maybe driving down the road. Or you can also start to think about some broadcast applications where it might be useful to have one focus puller controlling two cameras that are side by side. Again, we'll get to that in just a second. For starters, I think it's important to look at the little box by itself. So let's get into some detail on the NIA. The NIA 1 is a small aluminium box with a Gorilla Glass layer over the top of the touchscreen display, so we expect it to be really robust. On the top side, we have two LBUS connectors here, and there's nothing crazy new about these. Most ARRI ECS devices have two LBUS connectors. You can daisy chain devices together, and this will work with all existing LBUS cables. But on the flip side, that's where things get a little interesting. So here we have an ethernet socket, which is a standard RJ45 connector that will work with any ethernet cable you might have lying around. There are no proprietary cables needed to interact between the NIA and a network. Next to it, we have a USB-C socket. And this does a little more than USB-C sockets that we've had on other devices. So yes, you can do firmware updates with a USB stick here, but also you can use a USB to ethernet adapter if you need a second ethernet connector wherever you're mounting your NIA. Also, you can connect a cable directly between a NIA and your phone or a laptop to access the web interface, which is the place to go if you need to do some really crazy, nerdy custom configuration beyond what you can do with the touchscreen display. Now on the back side here, well, this channel will look quite familiar to anyone who's used an L-Cube and you can use the existing L-Cube bracket in the back of the NIA. 
But also you can use the C-Force motor clamp console because this will slide straight in. So if you wanted to be able to rod mount a near, you can totally do that. But we're Ari, so we made a beautiful bespoke bracket as well. And this is the RRA1. And the RRA1, well, it will just slide directly into the back here. You can hear that satisfying click. There's a little sprung loaded mechanism in there. And then I can use this thumb screw to turn a 3 8 inch screw with pin lock pins into say my side bracket on the camera or onto the top of the high five. This little bracket here will be available separately or in a kit with the Nia. And it's a great little quick release tool that you can also use now for an L cube if you wish. And if you really need to tighten it down, well, the thumb screw here also has a three millimeter hex slot in here. So you can use a tool to make sure it's really fast and secure. Now let me plug it in and I'll show you how the user interface looks. And you'll see here now that it's turned on I have four indicators around the side that correspond with the connectors. So I've plugged this LBUS cable into LBUS 1 and you can see that it's now green because it's found an LBUS device at the other end of that cable. If you just plug a cable in with nothing at the other end it won't be green. So this is a really useful tool for troubleshooting your connections. I'm now going to plug in the Ethernet connector to the other side and after a second now that is green and you'll notice that the A there it changed from an outline to being full. So an outline means that the near is configured to be on network channel A but that it hasn't found its pair to enable camera and lens control. As soon as it's solid you know that it's found another near on the network which also has an A which is the case for this camera here with its near and then immediately I have full camera and lens control available. So this is a super simple setup and I'm going to get into more detail but let's move right along to start with with our first little topic which will be third party camera control. The Neo One basically opens the door for the Hi5 to be able to communicate with a lot more different types of cameras. And I have two examples here for you today. The first is the Sony Burano, and the second camera here is the Blackmagic Ursa Cine 12K LF. And both of these cameras will be supported on day one when the Neo starts shipping with two new licenses for the Hi5 that will complement the existing licenses that are already available. Now, let me just explain how this is set up with the Burano here. I have an RF email module inside the Hi5 and that is talking to the C-Force Mini RF up here which is acting as my motor controller. I then have an LBUS daisy chain that's going from the Mini RF motor into the C-Force Mini and then into the Nia and that whole system is being powered by this LBUS to DTAP cable. At the back of the Nia here I just have a very short Ethernet cable going from the Nia into the Burano. So as you would expect with any ARRI ECS system, I have full lens metadata here and control of both motors. But now if I go over to the camera control page, well, I can also access camera control commands like you would expect with the other licenses that we have available. Now, that is all made possible because we have the Nia here basically acting as a protocol translator from this LBUS system via Ethernet into a language that the Burano will understand. And basically exactly the same thing is happening on the Blackmagic camera, only that the Nia is configured to basically spit out that Blackmagic protocol instead of the one that the Burano needs. Now, one other thing on those licenses, we will be updating the Sony, uh, the Sony camera control license for the Hi5 to be the Sony Venice camera control license because that's actually what it is. The Burano and the Venice speak in different protocols so there are two separate licenses for those cameras. But if you already own the Sony license key which will now become the Venice one you'll be happy to know that you don't have to purchase again, purchase it again if you'd like to use the Nia with a Venice and in fact you will get a lot better camera control because previously we were quite limited with what kind of control we could achieve with that remote socket on the Sony Venice. For example if you wanted to change the EI you had to go and make the camera into a broadcast style camera in the menu instead of the cine version which is a pain but now with the Nia we don't have to deal with that system and we can basically rewrite the protocol and it will all work in a much better fashion. So Nia is absolutely kind of going to be the hub for camera control with the Hi5 from us going forward and I'm pretty excited to announce some more cameras that we will support in the next few months. All right, now we're going to take it up a notch and I'll have multiple cameras and multiple hand units all working together in one network. To start with, we've gone back to our very basic setup, just two NEARs on the same network channel connected via an Ethernet cable. One for the camera, one for the Hi5.
Now I'm going to introduce a second Hi5 to show you how you might set it up if you wanted to have a first AC with a wireless Hi5 using an RF EMIT module connected directly to the camera and then maybe a DIT using NIAs to connect through a network. So for now I'm just going to go into the control setup of this Hi5 and turn off the assignment of focus to the knob so that it's not going to do anything and then if I turn this Hi5 on You'll see I've already preset the radio channel to be the same as the camera, so it should automatically connect. Let's just give it a second here. And then we have full camera and lens control as we would expect from this Hi5 sharing metadata. So if I adjust the iris over here, you'll see the depth of field indicator change. So that's all sharing camera and lens metadata, even though we have two kind of separate networks, one with an ethernet network and one with radio. I'm going to turn this off and I'll show you how we can introduce multiple cameras into one network with NIAs. So let's put the focus control back onto this focus knob here. All right. So now we're going to introduce a network switch. I have prepared one earlier and this is just a very simple five port ethernet switch. It's kind of a metaphor for a larger switch or a larger network that you might have a DIT set up for you, for example, or maybe a broadcast technician. So now we're going to plug from this near into the switch here. And then I'm going to go out of the switch into this near over here. So you'll see that it'll connect pretty quickly. Now we're A and A, and once again, I have full camera and lens metadata and control. So now I can talk or think about adding a second camera in. I have this Alexa Mini LF, and here we have another Nia, which I have already set up to be on network channel B. And then we can plug this into the switch and make that a little bigger. So now I have a B camera with a NIA set to network channel B and an A camera with its NIA set to network channel A. So from the high five over here on this NIA, I can very quickly just change over to, B, to the B camera and you'll see that it will connect. And now I have control of the mini LF here with lens data, camera metadata, camera control, the whole thing. So there are definitely situations where you might have a remote second camera that you don't need to you know, get to that often, this might be a way to configure a system like that where you have one high five and you can kind of sequentially change between different cameras that are all on the same network. But let's add in, add in another high five. So here I have a high five SX and I'm gonna, and it has its own near, which as you can see, I've set to be B. So actually let's make this A because we already have a B camera high five over here. And then if I add this into the network. There we go. It's already connected and I already have my camera and lens metadata here. So now with one network switch, I have the B camera control and I have A camera control all working within one managed network. And there is really no limit to how many camera systems you could be running with their own NIRs in one network with as many high fives as you like. So it's a pretty powerful and flexible system, I think. And we're you know very interested to see how some, especially big high-end customers working on multi-camera shows all the time can use this in really powerful and interesting ways. For the first time in the modern era of ARRI ECS, I can now control two lenses with one high five at the same time. And the cool thing about this system is, as you might have noticed, these lenses are completely different and that hasn't really been possible before. So now we're using lens data and NIAs in order to have a function we're calling lens sync. So this is what I have set up, right? I have a high five here the internal radio on the Alexa 35 is connected to this RF emit module. So this is a wireless system. Then I have an Elbus daisy chain on the 35. And then part of that chain is the near one here. I have the same thing on the Alexa Mini LF, but I'm not using the internal radio. It's just an Elbus daisy chain of motors and a near. And the nears are obviously connected together. I have network channel A here and network channel B for the Alexa Mini LF. But you can see on the B near here that I have a little thing that says focus iris and zoom and it says focus A and iris A. So this near is grabbing the lens data that it can see is being set on the A camera here and then duplicating it on the B camera. 
Now, I also went out to Screenplane, who are a very cool company who specialize in 3D rigs, and I actually got to use the first ever 3D rig that was used with the Alexa Classic back in the day to set up this shot here to show you how it would look in a perfect running environment. But on top of 3D, there are also some other use cases where it can be really handy to have multiple lenses all synced together. So one might be that we now see big budget films opting to have an infrared camera in a beam splitter with a sky replacement scenario. But you can also think about plate unit photography where you might need to have multiple cameras, say six or 10 or however many cameras that have the same lens that are all perfectly synced so that you can ride iris up and down. Totally possible with this setup. And there are also some applications for broadcast where it might be useful to have one focus puller controlling two cameras at the same time that are right next to each other. And the nice thing about lens sync is that we have also built in the ability to have an offset. So if one camera was one foot closer to the subject than the other, you could put a one foot offset in and then still pull focus to the distance of the A camera, knowing that the B camera will be sharp, even if it's not exactly perfectly aligned in a 3D rig, but might actually be a couple of meters away. All right, here is our last setup for today, where I'm combining a radio interface adapter, a RIA, and a network interface, so RIA and NIA. Now, it might not be in the location you would expect, so let me explain. This is a kind of model of the setup that I was lucky enough to be involved with some testing for over at Pinewood Studios with the crew from Valentine Films. Big shout out to Mike and Francoise, and also to Pete Loudon, their first AC. Now, Mike is an underwater cinematographer. He shot a whole bunch of films you definitely would have seen, and we were using his housing with an Alexa 35 and Enso lenses in there. We also put a NIA in the housing because their loom already had an Ethernet connection in it. So this is the underwater section and then we had a long ethernet cable running up to the surface. Ethernet is great in this situation because you can get a lot further than you can with Lbus. Normally we're, we're limited to about 15 or 20 meters with Lbus but right out of the box with two NIAs they can uh, be 100 meters apart with a standard ethernet cable and certainly a lot longer if you want to grab an off-the-shelf ethernet to fiber optic adapter. So they had this system here, and then we're coming out of the water somewhere along the ethernet cable up to a NIA and a RIA that were attached to Pete's focus station. And the cool difference here and what was new for them is that this was the first time that they could then have a wireless solution for the Hi5. So normally this would have to be tethered with a cable to the camera when you're using a cable of that length. But by using NIA and then a RIA at the surface, he could then walk around, he could peer over the side of the tank, engage in more conversations, and then quickly make adjustments without having to rush back to wherever, to wherever his focus station was. So that is a cool situation for how we can combine a rear and a near. The last little thing I have to talk about is the partner program. So we are now opening up the ARRI partner program to include ECS, which is basically a combination of camera metadata, lens metadata, and lens motor control. And we would love as many third-party manufacturers to approach us as possible. You can Google ARRI Partner Program and find the form on the webpage. The Partner Program has been around for a long time, but it's really the lens motor control that is now a part of it. So if you have an idea for a use case where a computer could be controlling lens motors, for example, or your own piece of hardware like a Moco robot, and you'd like to make use of ARRI lens motors for that, we are totally open to that, and we will be sharing more of the kind of work in progress things that are happening at the moment that aren't just ready to talk about, but they will be in a couple of months, so stay tuned. All right, thank you so much for watching. A big thanks to Mike and Francois and Pete and Sebastian at Screenplane for helping me out with this video, and thank you to watching until the end. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.